So who is the most overrated player in the championship? Let's find out. Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Last week we went over the most underrated players in the championship. This time round we're switching it up a little bit. So I put this question out on the community tab. We got over 240 responses to it and in today's video we're going to be going over some of your guys' answers. Before we do jump into anything though, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsors over at OneFootball. If you're not already, make sure to go and check it out in the top line of the description down below. We've got even more championship games that are going on tonight. Obviously we had some going on last night as well. So if you want to get live updates to your phone whenever a goal goes in, OneFootball is the place to stay on top of everything. We had the managerial sacking obviously with the Holden being let go by Bristol City. I think that that one was to be on the cards, really. So, if you want to stay on top of all the recent news, get articles about your club and others around the championship, one football is the place to be. I'll also be interested to know from you Bristol City fans what you actually make of the Dean Holden sacking. It was, I mean, it was to be expected really. But without any further ado, let's jump into this one. So since Bristol City are in the news at the moment with the departure of manager Dean Holden, let's start out with the Bristol City player. So Charlie Newby commented this, unfortunately I have to put Naki Wells in the conversation. He's been exposed as a one-dimensional poacher this season and really doesn't offer us anything other than the occasional finish for us. And you know what, when you actually look into his season so far, I think I completely agree with that. I think that if you were to ask people, you know, to name your like top 10 championship strikers over the last few years in terms of the players who are always sort of getting up there in terms of their high numbers, we always sort of associate Naki Wells with being that sort of player. But since making the move over to Bristol City, I really don't think he's particularly cut the mustard, to be honest with you, and it's certainly in terms of the reputation that he had going there. So these right here are Naki Wells' numbers over the past few seasons, obviously, before joining Bristol City, had that fantastic sort of purple patch with QPR over the Christmas period, where he was, yeah, scoring goals for fun for them. He then made his move over to Bristol City in the second half of last season, scored five goals in 13 starts and four appearances from the bench, but so far this season, his level of performance... Not, not only in terms of sort of the lack of goals that have been there, but in terms of his overall play, he's not really been contributing all that much, just the six goals for him so far this season. If we actually look into his season as well, and in terms of sort of how spread out the actual goals have been, so these have been all the matches that Naki Wells have played for Bristol City so far this season. I mean, that right there, you can see the goals that he's chipped in with here and there. He's never had a consistent run where he's been within the goal. We picked up on it in that cup game the other day where he had that you know opportunity to square it to Jamie Patterson. I don't know whether it's a lack of confidence, but his decision making this season in the final third has just been really poor with a player that we associate to be really good in those sort of areas over the last few years in the championship. So yeah, right now I probably would throw Naki Wells into that conversation. I think that's a good shout. He's been underachieving this season. Next up, let's go for a Watford player. Obviously they beat North End last night, but there were quite a few shouts in here for Ishmael Asar and I think that this is one which is worth looking into a little bit. Now don't get me wrong, just because a player is maybe overrated doesn't mean they're a bad footballer, it just means the hype is disproportionate to where they are at this stage of their career and I think there is a little bit in Saar coming into this season. So, I mean, that game against Liverpool last season is the one that's going to stick in a lot of people's memories, you know, against a team who up until that point, you know, people were talking about as maybe going unbeaten throughout the whole season. The fact that Watford beat them and it was such a brilliant, dazzling performance from Saar going forward, that game will live long in the memory for a lot of people. And for, you know, people who haven't seen much of him since will still associate him with very much still being that same player. In the summer, there were transfer fees being talked about, you know, of maybe a 30 to 40 million pound move. Liverpool being interested in Manchester United, loads of big clubs. And don't get me wrong, I think he's been alright this season, but he's not been a... I, I wouldn't say he's been at a, that sort of level, like 30, 40 million pound player that we thought was going to just rip up the championship this season. I think he's been maybe a level down from that. So if we look into his numbers so far this season, I mean, seven goals and four assists isn't a bad return by this stage of the season by any means. I mean, that is helped quite a bit by his two goals and two assists against Bristol City. That does, you know, bump him up a little bit. The thing with Saar is, and if we actually look at his season so far, he's had a, quite a few sort of barren spells in terms of goal assists and contributions. So if we take this sort of period here, where he only chips in with three goal contributions for quite a sizable chunk of the season, if we were to compare him to, say, an Emi Buendia, who I think coming into this season, a lot of people would have drawn comparisons to in terms of like the transfer fees that both players were being talked about. Buendia has constantly been brilliant for Norwich this season. 
he's never had sort of a barren spell of more than a few games without chipping in with the goal contribution, whereas Saar so far this season, it's been a lot more spread out if we compare the two there. When Dee has obviously had the advantage of playing in a more fluid Norwich side compared to Saar, who's been playing in a little bit more of a sort of like disjointed Watford side, who's been chopping and changing with, you know, system and managers throughout the season so far. But yeah... He's not been a bad player, don't get me wrong, but has he lived quite up to what I thought he'd go on to do this season? Not yet for me. Tom Jones has put a shout in here for Daniel Johnson, calling him a pen merchant. Yeah, I mean, I will admit Daniel Johnson scores a lot of penalties. I think the thing when it comes to DJ is he's just very inconsistent. When he's good, he's very good, and when he's not on it, he's pretty anonymous to the 90 minutes, you know. He didn't really do anything of note in our game yesterday against Watford. I mean, if we look into his numbers here last season, he was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Our player of the season, 12 goals, 7 assists. I will admit he scored quite a few penalties in there. But his overall level of performance was really at high standard. This season... Not really been at that level, just the three goals and three assists for him so far this season. I think if you look at the average match ratings there, that paints quite the picture. He's dropped off from a 7 to a 6.6 .6 this season. Max CCFC has gone for low, I assume that's Jamal Lowe you're talking about there. A low's an interesting one, maybe the first one on this list that I disagree with a little bit. Let's take a look at his numbers now. I mean, he's a player who I think takes a while to adapt to new surroundings. I think that's a fair assessment to make. I think that when he originally signed for Wigan um, from Portsmouth, there was quite a lot of hype that came along with him. It took him, I'd say, probably almost half the season to adapt to the way that Wigan wanted him to play. And then obviously he made his move over to Swansea where I mean, similarly to his move um, from Portsmouth to Wigan, it took him quite a bit of time to settle in, and it was probably that game against Cardiff which kick-started his Swansea career, because up until that point, I mean, I'd been asking questions of him, you know, he was asked to play in a slightly different role, playing as sort of that number nine alongside Andre Ayew, he was missing quite a few easy chances up until that point, and it probably was that brace against Cardiff, I mean, he scored that wonderful goal with the outside of his foot, didn't he? That has really kick-started him, you know, a, a bunch of goals in this quite short period of time here. Quite an interesting one here, there were quite a few shouts in here for Todd Cantwell. Uh, Rams fan YT replied, I honestly think that people rate him because of how well he did in the Premier League. He also has an 81.1% pass accuracy, which is unreal for the Championship. I would personally rate him and don't think he's overrated. I think that's a good point. I think that people rate Todd Cantwell because of how well he did for Norwich last season in what was... I mean, a pretty shambolic season for them in the Premier League. One of their high points was, at times, the quality that Todd Cantwell produced. So far this season, it's been a bit of a weird one for him. He's only made 15 starts, so he hasn't actually had all too many opportunities to maybe show what he's capable of. In that time, he's just scored three goals and got two assists, so... By no means has he, you know, ripped the championship apart like maybe a few people were expecting him to this season. I think, to be honest with you, he just falls into that probably like inconsistent category. You know, if you catch if you catch him on the good day, he's absolutely dazzling. If you catch him on the bad day, he can be pretty anonymous to the 90 minutes. Obviously, we all saw recently that game against Middlesbrough where Donald Fisher absolutely did a number on him. Joseph Brady, like quite a few other people, suggested Anthony Knockout. Said to be really good, one of the best in the championship. Doesn't really impress me. Doesn't have that spark that other players have. Definitely a player that's worth looking into in a little bit more detail. So if we look into Anthony Knockout's career, I mean, this was obviously the standout one with Brighton. They were promoted that season. 15 goals, 8 assists. He was absolutely magical. I think he got player of the year. He reminded me quite a lot of... Of, um, someone like an Eden Hazard maybe in the sort of way that he played his game and since that season I mean there's been an obvious drop off in his numbers I mean the most goals he scored in the season has been three since he got 15 that season so far for Forest this season has just scored two goals and got one assist which on the face surface of things looks incredibly poor for a player who I think a lot of people still quite rightly um, rate quite highly. I think it's fair to say that Knockout has adapted and changed his game since those Brighton days. I don't know whether it's because he's perhaps lost a yard of pace, maybe. Whenever I've caught a glimpse of Forrest this season, He's always been one of their more lively players going forward, and I don't think that the system that they played and the players that they've got around him have particularly helped Knockout. You know, that lack of a sort of a recognised goal scorer for Forrest this season obviously hasn't helped. Another player at Forrest who I think has had a really big drop off lately in his career has been Luke Freeman. I know he's not played all too much football this season, just 10 starts for him, but I rated Luke Freeman at one point so highly when he was at QPR at really the peak of his powers. He made the move over to Sheffield United, which just hasn't worked out for him. And this lone move to Forest this season, he scored just one goal for them and got no assists to his name yet. There were some interesting shots in here for Middlesbrough goalkeeper Marcus Bettinelli. Now, I remember at the 
start of the season when Middlesbrough really weren't conceding a lot of goals, I sort of held back on rating Bettinelli all too highly, purely because they were really not facing many shots per 90. Now that Bettinelli is being forced into a few more uncomfortable situations, I think some of those flaws have been highlighted recently. If we look into the goalkeeping stats for championship goalkeepers so far this season, so what we're looking at here is the save percentage that goalkeepers make of all the shots on target they face. Bettinelli finds himself 25th in the championship for this with a save percentage of just 65% which really isn't all too good. Interestingly, Raphael of Reading, another goalkeeper who's underperformed so far this season when it comes to these stats, he's at 64.9% but yeah, Bettinelli I think is an interesting one isn't it? He sort of tailed off towards the end of his time at Fulham. Quite a few shouts were in here for Troy Deeney. I mean, yeah, understandably so. I mean, when you actually look into his stats this season, on the face surface it looks like he's doing very well. 14 starts, 4 appearances off the bench for Watford. He's got 7 goals and 3 assists. You then take a little bit of a deeper dive into that and realise that, you know, how many penalties he's actually scored so far this season. And something that we mentioned uh, a few weeks ago, it might have been a few months ago even on the channel, was that Watford probably play better as a team without Troy Deeney. I mean, their best performance of the season so far came without him getting on the pitch, that 6-0 win against Bristol City. There's just so much more speed in their play. I think you can throw Andre Gray into that uh, category as well alongside Deeney. He's been a brilliant player throughout his career at Watford and done a hell of a lot for that club, but I think that naturally that separation's probably going to come in this summer. Now one shot that did surprise me a little bit, and there were a lot of people suggesting this one, was Timu Puki. Now, I mean, I think that's a little bit harsh. I mean, he's currently the championship's fourth top scorer. He's got 13 goals so far this season. I mean, I suppose if people were still claiming that he was like the best striker in the league, then maybe you can say, okay, he might be a little bit overrated because I think that some people this season have probably overtaken him in, in terms of that regard. And probably the fact that he's had a couple of sort of barren spells in terms of goals so far this season when he's gone, you know, a few game weeks on the trot without scoring. But overall, I still rate Timu Puki quite high. He's probably not quite going to get to the same goal tally that he got to last time in the championship, but I don't think that anyone was really expecting him to do that. Like, that was a freakishly good season. And even while perhaps not delivering those numbers this season, he's still doing well. You know, 13 goals at this point in the season. You know, only three players have scored more than he has. David Brooks was a shout in here, quite similar to Ishmael Asar, someone who came into this season in the championship with quite a bit of hype, obviously a lot of um, attention around him in terms of a potential transfer back to the Premier League. Brooks is an interesting one because at the start of the season I was fully on board the hype train for him he was doing brilliantly for this Bournemouth side who was scoring a lot of goals lately and quite similarly to a lot of the other Bournemouth players he's just fallen off really he's had no goal contributions in his last 10 championship matches he's just lacking that bit of spark and confidence at the moment like a lot of the Bournemouth squad obviously Tom Lawrence had quite a few shouts in here yeah I can sort of understand where that one's coming from really he's been a bit of a a bit of a hit miss player since signing for Derby to be honest with you He's another one that falls into that inconsistent category for me. When he's good, he's very good. And when he's bad, he's pretty anonymous to the game. I remember, I think it was last season, it might have been the season before when Preston played Derby, but he absolutely rang rings around us that day. And, I mean, if he could have sort of like that level of influence on all of his games and he'd be a top championship player maybe even pushing on to the Premier League but it is just that sort of level of inconsistency which really lets him down. But there we have it guys I think we'll wrap it up there so thank you very much for everyone that did leave a suggestion for who you think is the most overrated player in the championship apologies that we couldn't get through all of them but some very good shouts in there I'm interested to get some more of your guys thoughts in the comments down below but apart from that thanks for watching guys make sure to leave a like if you did go to enjoy make sure to subscribe for a bit of regular championship content but other than that I'll see See you all in the next one.